Hi, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of your Frederish podcast. My name is Gary, and I'm your host for today once again. Tell me, how are you doing today? Are you enjoying this chilly end of week? Uh, one day before the so-called Good Friday, that is the religious holiday, we have uh, almost everywhere uh, in the world, as far as I can tell, but certainly in Brazil, certainly in, in America as a whole, right? So yeah, we're about to, to have a a extended weekend, which is awesome. Not to mention, of course, that the, on Sunday it's Easter, a very, uh, s very much celebrated uh, holiday in, in Brazil. I mean, it is celebrated all over the world, but in here, for some reason, it has a, a I I think, a different atmosphere, so to say. Um, the thing of eating chocolate. Uh, again, as far as I understand, is is present in many other countries, but here in Brazil, it is different, okay? Uh, it even gets to be a little bit um, crazy, for lack of a better word, because like chocolate gets way too expensive. It is normally way too expensive, but it gets even more expensive, surprisingly enough. So yeah, but <laughs> I have to, to say that uh, we all get happy during Easter here in Brazil. It's a good, it's a happyish tradition, if that makes any sense. But I don't know why am I, I'm um, making this extension, although it's an, an interesting uh, piece of information. But this is not the topic of today's episode, as you already know. You read the title, but before we jump into it, just tell me, did you already grab your cup of coffee? Yeah, it's been uh, some chilly days in the past weeks. Uh, thankfully, we were, we are, we appreciate hot days, but uh, the past in the past months, the dosage has been a little bit exaggerated. So, <laughs> um, good riddance for summer. Yeah, it's the first, actually, the first episode recorded in uh, in fall in the autumn. But anyways. Um, Go grab a cup of coffee, water, okay? Don't forget to stay hydrated. It's very important, even more important than drinking than drinking coffee and, 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 and hot drinks. Uh, it is drinking water, of course. Sit down, you know, relax. Because today we're gonna talk about something not so relaxing, a little, it's uh, something more, a little more um, intriguing, I would say. Um, the food for, for, for your brain. Okay, for your for your thought, for your thinking. Okay, um, that is the the work behind uh, the work of English author George Orwell. Okay, you probably know him, at least uh, heard heard from him, heard of him, heard his name before. So today I want to be more specific. I don't want to talk about all of his work. Plus, because I haven't read all of his work, so <laughs> I want to talk about the two most known ones. Okay, I'm not gonna risk and say the best, but I must say that th these are the only uh, of his uh, books I have read so far. Okay, so, but uh, certainly two iconic works, two iconic books. Um, yeah, I'm talking about Animal Farm and. 1984, okay? Animal Farm in Brazil is called uh, Revolução dos Bichos, okay? Um, I'm not gonna spoil if you haven't read the books, okay? I'm gonna uh, make an... Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk around it and talk more about the, 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 the meaning behind the work, the story. Uh, but it's uh, in, in short words. It is an allegory of um, it's an allegory to criticize authority okay uh, not not just authority but the bad authority the authority of the state okay uh, of course state a state pre, uh, presumes authority of course but the the wrong authority the authority uh, authoritarian oh my gosh Authorit authoritarian, authoritarian, yeah, uh, thing of uh, of states, 
which was very common during the days that he wrote it. It was like almost ongoing with the World War II, okay? But it was written, um, I'm not sure when the animal farm, I'm gonna check it on my, my phone here. Um, but I think it, it was written um, before the World War II. Let me check it and I'll be back. Okay, I was I checked and I was wrong. It was published uh, a few months after World War II had finished, but it certainly was written during at some point during the World War II when things were were going on, right? Of course, at the end of it, but yeah, it was kind of a together, okay, alongside with the 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 existence of the the World War II. So yeah. Um, it is the book, and I, I don't, I don't want to bring any, I don't want to make any spoiler here. But um, as I said, it's an, uh, it's a, it's an allegory that is totally criticist to uh, authoritarian, uh, you know, dictatorships. Okay, uh, which is kind of a redundant, but yeah, that's that's the the whole point here. And 1984, again, I don't want to spoil anything here, but it goes totally, it's not an, uh, an allegory, it is a, a dystopia, okay? It's a dystopian story. In the future, okay, 1984, just from that, let me just clarify, it was written in, nine, this I know for sure, it was written in 19, published uh, in 1958, 59, something like that. That was his last work, his last book, okay? Uh, Orwell unfortunately died a few a few uh, months after publishing <clears throat> excuse me a few months after 1984 got published okay um, and it is a dystopic future in which Big Brother uh, that is not not the reality show okay uh, the reality show was based on this uh, character in, in Orwell's book um but yeah the the symbology says it all okay it's like you being washed okay as a citizen 24 7. okay if you don't know the meaning of 24 7 it means all the time okay <laughs> so yeah um which is like authoritarian a authoritarian uh state like basically right um and my whole point here is okay point number one go and read these books, okay? I'm gonna make all the efforts here to not bring any spoilers. It won't be necessary because the point here is not to discuss the the books per se, but, of, but the whole thing with uh, authoritarian states, okay? Or at least authoritarian um, actions coming from states, from, uh, from government leaders in some occasions, you know, I'm not talking about any specific country, but my point here is like countries that presumably are democratic, all right? Uh, okay, I have to open an exception here and say Russia, <laughs> okay? Uh, and China, why not? You know, like uh, technically they're democracies. Okay, even North Korea, for Christ's sake, is a democracy, right? Uh, <laughs> So yeah, you, you you get my point here. You know, I don't I don't mean to criticize any point of view, any cosmovision, any political ideals or anything specifically left or right or center or whatever. This is not the point. The point here is like, how can we still have places in which they call it a democracy and it is not at the end of the day, right? And of course, we have some um, some examples. The ones I brought, it kind of uh, doesn't make room doesn't make room for discussion for any argument. I mean, no one would 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 say that these three countries I mentioned are uh, healthy democracies. Okay, at least they would agree they're deficient democracies, right? Uh, I'm not saying that there should be, they should be perfect democracies. I don't even know if such thing exists. Okay, because Perfect democracy would require perfect people, you know, and we're not perfect. We're far from, from being perfect, right? So yeah, um, today I, this is my opinion here, okay? 
But I have the impression that uh, because we have had internet so far so in the past, in a, in a strong way, I talk a lot about it in my episodes here, but uh, in the past, more strongly in the past uh, 50 years, okay? Uh, it seems like some, um, I like the term projects of power, okay? Because parenthesis here, I personally believe that every, every political endeavor is, okay, as a truth of the, as a truth of the matter, or carries with it a, a project of power, okay? Uh, well, projects of power aren't necessarily evil, but they tend to be. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty skeptical when it comes to like, hey, these guys are going to save us, okay? Um, because this is the whole, this is the concept that has led humanity to jump into the craziest uh, ideologies all over its history, all over our history, you know, from, from you know, Nazis to, to what we see today, you know, North Korea or, or Russia, for example. So this is the, the point here. This is the whole idea behind the, what I re, what I understand from reading uh, George Orwell, okay, is that, well, power requires responsibility, okay? Uh, and if you are to, to, to exert a position of power, be that a president, a prime minister in your country, or even a, or even a legislator, or a judge for the matter, you know, like, or a justice, as they say, the Supreme Court judges, Supreme Court members, you should do that with responsibility, you know, which unfortunately, I haven't seen it in the past uh, years, okay, as much as I would like. I'm not being dystopic here. I'm not saying that we're on the other side of democracy. No, this is not. But there are things that I would like to see more people talking about and discussing, respectfully discussing, and I, I don't. Well, the first um, thing I'd like to, to mention is based on uh, the book Animal Farm, okay, by George Orwell. Um, look, I will kind of spoil here. I'm sorry, okay, but uh, there's no way to do that without kind of spoiling. But yeah, um, one of the things that are used as a weapon um, by... I don't like this expression very much, but let's say power to be, <laughs> the power to be, the powerful people, people that come to power somehow, okay? Um, it is the the discourse, okay? That is the, the speech, the public speech, okay? So in order to do something, you cannot today, thank God, if you're an evil person, of course, thank God, you cannot be 100% um, uh, authentic. Okay. For example, you let's just bring it to a, another metaphor. Say, for example, you politically want to invade the house of your neighbor. Okay, he hasn't done anything to you other than not accepting when you offer money to buy it. Okay, regardless of the conditions, just uh, let's just let's just focus on the on the the essence here. Okay, you, you offer money as much as you had, and he didn't accept it. Okay, so. Your option number two is invading it, stealing it, you know, uh, killing your, your neighbor. <laughs> Again, guys, it's just a metaphor, okay? Please understand that. You're not gonna do that openly, okay? Because your other neighbors will see, will start seeing you as a threat. So instead, you're gonna spread around the, the neighborhood that this guy, that whose house you're, in, you're interested in, in is a bad person, is a criminal, is a dangerous uh, person, you know, it's a menace to society, things like that. And then all the neighborhood, depending on your, your uh, how persuasive you are, will join you in this, in this you know, uh, 
endeavor, in this work, in this attempt. And most likely you will be su successful, okay? I'm just painting an example very vaguely here, quite vaguely here, but you got my point, right? It's like in the animal farm, you have like the villains, okay? I'll, I'll try to, my best not to spoil anything, but I'll, I'll, I will accidentally do that. But the villains, okay? Uh, expelling another villain, bad guys expelling another. So uh, back in the, the time, in the beginning of the story, even worse threat and taking the power themselves and at the end of the story becoming as evil or maybe even more evil than the than the the, the first threat okay the first menace um on the condition that you wouldn't do that okay because they saw themselves at the beginning uh as like uh communitary as like you know all the people you know, people, all people are to are the same. We all have the same rights, you know. Um, and it was not. It was a lie. Okay, it was a facade. I see that. Okay, I, I want to be careful here not to make this episode as dense as it already is. But <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the the problem with politic politicians today is that they don't say what they really want. Okay. Uh, in all spheres, you know, in the leg legislative, in the in the executive, uh, and to my biggest concerns and surprise and concern in the judiciary, judiciary system lately, you know, the so-called juristocracy. Okay, um, they act, you know, as to strike opponents. It doesn't really matter how worthy of uh, these strikes the uh, the uh, uh, the opposers the, the political opposers um are it doesn't matter the fact is that they do that and they use the state to do that they use what they have in their hands okay uh you could say one could say well this is a, this is politics this is the this is how we, how it is uh until a certain extent yeah okay uh but Things have been, you know, passed beyond the, the reasonable, in my opinion, as far as I understand, okay? Not only in Brazil, but also here in Brazil, okay? I don't want to be specific here because this is not the point, but I, just to give you an example, uh, you cannot say everything you think, okay, uh, on the internet. Of course, if you say criminal things, criminal, read. That, are, that is constitutionally criminal, not just because Gary thinks it's criminal, no, okay? So you you cannot say anything, everything you think, even things that you know for sure aren't in the book of crimes, okay? Because someone, some uh, political force, or, you know, some political conjunction of forces, of power, may use the state against you and put you behind bars. That's what it is today. I'm not saying this is like ri ri ridiculous, ridiculously like that, you know, like just like me here, I will be in jail. If next week we don't have an episode, you guys already know why. <laughs> no, no, I'm not just saying that. But it isn't what it was until 10 years ago. We had more freedom to that matter, you know. Uh, and the thing with 1984, I'm going to step away a little, not, not just, uh, not just, um, keeping politics away from it, but I, but more like bringing the whole thing of technology, okay? Uh, and I can't help but think when I think technology and danger of uh, of not having privacy anymore, I can't help but think of the show, uh, Netflix show, Black Mirror, okay? Um, Oro couldn't have predicted that because he lived in the, in the, and died in the, he died in the 50s, uh, in the late 50s. So, but he, had he lived a couple of more decades, he would probably write something, you know, like how technology that is uh, originally made and developed to help us is kind of threatening us at some points, right? Um, of course, there are way more benefits than, you know, negative aspects, but I, I think that if you Get the negative aspects, the 5%, I don't know, 4%, 1% of a, 
the negative part of technology today and you remember and you not remember and you notice the according to me according to my understanding uh rising of um i will try to make a name here make a term here politicism that is using politics using the state using the powers you have in your hands as an elected or directed constitutionally authority to make your own game okay uh it sounds like a movie but as far as i haven't as far as i have seen and witnessed in the political scenario again in brazil and all over the world in the past five six seven years you know it's really concerning you know i've seen that i've seen this happen okay i'm not gonna be specific here because we would have to stay here for one or two hours only talking about it and it would be and it would have been kind of bore, not only boring but also dense you know and that's not the point here all right so how does george orwell tackles the authoritarian uh, the politicism if I am allowed, if you guys allow me to use this term right now, which I don't even know if it exists. Uh, so, how uh, Orwell's work can help us open our eyes against the the up the the, the rising of a uh, authoritarian authoritarian uh, regimes or projects of power, as I said, you know. Projects of power that flirt with authoritarian um, actions, you know. For example, uh, sending people to, people to jail because of being criticized by them. That's what we're seeing in Brazil. I'm not making anything up here, okay? We have it. Regardless of if you agree with or not with the, the person who said something, you know. Uh, but there is a bill going around the, the legislative today. Uh, hopefully it doesn't get approved but it is there it is you know uh running around in there in the congress that will foresee a you know crime punishment as a crime and consequently as a law uh punishment um for people who criticize politicians authorities I mean, what kind of democracy doesn't allow people to criticize the authorities? That doesn't make any sense at all, you know? Um, of course, I'm not talking about like going through personal things. I say some personal thing about the uh, things about a politician or something. He or she could sue me, uh, take me to the court as a as a as an individual, you know, not as a, an authority. That's the hope. That that's different thing, you know. I see people. Uh, using this as an argument, you know, like, hey, there's this. No, there isn't that thing. You know, if I say something that affects and offends and uh, uh, slanders uh, someone personally, there, the, the, the law predicts all the mechanism to, for the person to defend him or herself. Period. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so how does Aro answering my own question? Okay. You're gonna have to read the books and tell me, okay? But basically, he was a, he wasn't a libertarian per se, as we see today. Like in terms of like, hey, I don't want as much as state influence. I want to be more like, uh, let us not have a state. Let us not have leaders. You know, he he was not that. On the other, he was the opposite of that. He was a more, um, what's the term? Socialist guy. Okay, meaning he he saw the importance of having you know a strong and present uh state behind the you know society's actions and everything but for it but according to him it gets crystal clear in his while reading his books that uh that doesn't presume that doesn't that doesn't mean that they can do anything okay because the authoritarian regimes that he was criticizing through his works was the Soviet Union, okay, which is, was officially a socialist, communist thing, that is power to people, you know, and people were being oppressed, you know, 
uh, it wasn't happening. And he was seeing that, you know, despite of the fact that he was a defender of this ideology, is a, was keen to this ideology, he was, he was like scared. Like, where are we gonna be, you know, 30 years from now, that is 1990, 1984, you know, if things continue going this way. And that's basically, 1984 is basically a his prediction, okay? His pessimistic prediction about the the world 30 years in the future, in his view, from 30 years from his future, from his, sorry, from his time, that is 1990, 1950, Sorry, 1956, 57, 19, 1957, 1958, when he wrote the book. So 1984 is basically a pessimistic prediction of what the future would end up bringing and being like, you know, if things would continue the way they were in the Soviet Union. You know, this is the whole, the main target of his criticism. You know, some people probably don't like that, but this is it. That's what he wrote. You know, he has a as a left oriented um, intellectual, he was the first to throw stones to what was he's, he would see that as wrong things, you know. Uh, and here the biggest concern, his biggest concern, which is my concern to uh, the main focus of this conversation here is uh, the prosecution, the prosecution of a uh, freedom okay so there isn't anything worse than not letting not allowing people to talk to speak their minds okay uh, of course justice should be done all the time if people say f criminal things they should respond to these things or say lies or speak lies about someone that offend something that lies that offend someone's honor there is a whole mechanism you know, uh, in order to solve this problem in, in, you know, according to the law, okay? So if closing, wrapping it up and, uh, and getting to the, the end of it, I believe that what George Orwell meant basically is like, let us all, let's, let us all talk, let us all listen to each other and, and let us make the, the state strong because we are strong, you know, uh, and and because and, and being united, that's why we're strong, you know, let's be united as a nation, despite of our differences, despite of our different opinions, you know, um, and this is what I what I cherish the most today, you know, and I would really like would really appreciate to know you've reading or you are reading or you have read uh, these books I'm mentioning and you are you are presenting me gifting me with your opinion you know after having read these books okay uh to see if you have had the same impression as i have and of course if you agree to what i've said here to what i've been you know pointing out here as far as this topic is concerned and that's it for this episode, guys. Thank you so very much for your lovely company. I see you in the next week. Have a lovely uh, extended holiday, uh, extended weekend and a lovely holiday. Happy Easter. See you in the next week. Bye-bye.